okay, I'm, we're there? Okay, we're here. We think we're here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is Vicki from Green Sewing and Vacuum. And um, anyway, I hope you're there. It's five after six, a little late. Oh, Tina's giving me a thumbs up. So it looks like we're working. Woohoo, we got it. Yay, yay. So <laughs> anyway, as you know, it gets a little nuts around here sometimes, you know. And I only know this end, so I just sit here kind of like, you know, doing whatever it is that I do. So I've had a busy couple of weeks. Uh, finally got a couple things done that have been in my sewing room for a while. So we're going to show some really fun stuff. And then tonight I'm going to be showing the pattern connect feature on the Solaris. So um, just something that I played with this weekend. So I thought, thought it would be kind of fun to show you because I think... The last class, uh, the last time we got together, I had that wreath that I had done and using the pattern connect. And so I kept trying to think of what I could do to show you how to use your pattern connect with something obviously not quite as lengthy as 97 minutes a half. But um, so anyway, got that. But I'm going to just show you some really fun things. Like I said, I got a couple of things done Um just this past weekend that had been sitting around in my sewing room for a while. So the first one I'll show you is the, uh, this is called the Butterfly Sling Purse from Emmeline Bags. And it is really cool because it has the little flip lock here that opens up and then there's magnets that it opens up. So it's probably a little difficult to see but there's a pocket here, and then there's a window pocket for your ID here. There's a zipper here for more storage. This has all kinds of little pockets in it. So there's a pocket there. And then both of the pockets on the ends, the zipper pouches, there's actually pockets, little holders in here for like credit cards and that type of thing. So there's one on this side and then another one on this side. So this had actually been in my sewing room for probably, I think even longer than a year. I just never got to it, but I finally did it um, actually weekend before last. This weekend I worked on a couple of other things, but, and then this was a, a lime colored vinyl that I've had in my sewing room for quite a while too, but just a nice little, crossbody that you could see oh well you guys can't see it down here so here we go here it is this one this one yeah, okay you can wear it okay number i can three. wear this one number three okay <laughs> we need to turn me around so i can see me there, <laughs> there now go. i can see me okay <laughs> so just a nice little crossbody so just kind of a fun one i i actually did enjoy making this one so it's been like laying around too long but now it's here for you guys to see so there was that, and then this little guy, actually, I guess I'll use this one. This little guy has, um, I ordered him last Halloween, and I finally got around to getting him done. Uh, zipper head, uh, it's the In the Hoop Steampunk Zipper Head Pumpkin Pouch. And we were trying to think about, what? Oh, Tim Burton movie. That's what I was just going to say. We were trying to think of what this reminds us of. And Jennifer just remembered that it reminds us of the Tim Burton, isn't it called Nightmare Before Christmas? Nightmare or Before Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas. But this is what it kind of looks like. But it's done entirely in the hoop. He's got a cute little zipper mouth. That's all I... I put I put candy corn <laughs> fabric in there, you know. Too bad it doesn't have any candy corn in it. I could be in for that right now. And then you put a little D-ring on it so you can hang it off of something. But I thought he turned out really cute. And I used the um, uh, Sally Tomatoes zipper by the yard in the gunmetal. So I had it at home, cute little pull on it. I was going to use the um, a skull pull but I didn't have it for the size three zipper. Sorry, Tina, didn't get a skull pole. Okay. So I know, <laughs> I know. So that one, and then um, another one that had been, this, this one had been on the floor of my sewing room 
since last year because it came in. I don't know how many of you might remember when I showed the Merry and Bright by OESD. And they do it in two different color ways. They do one in kind of your traditional Christmas colors and then one in the golds and silvers. And so what I had done is I took this fabric home. This, this is a purple, um, a purple fabric that has kind of a sheen to it. And it just, I think it turned out really nice. I don't like it. A little bit. Just so, yeah, just there so we can go. get, there we go. I thought it turned out really cool. It has a little bit of glitter in part of the candles. They put some metallic threads in the candles. And then there's some stars, some little stars on it and everything. Just, I thought it turned out really nice. And I got, this was a fairly quick, stitch out for a tile scene because generally the tiles as you know like we've got the um santa's workshop and the, the uh over the river and the different trees and stuff generally because these are all done in a five by seven hoop and it usually takes some of them like jackie's working on summer glory right now that came out this summer and I think she's, well, she's over halfway done. I do know that. But some of the blocks actually take almost two hours to stitch out. So the longest any one of these took uh, was one of the candles. It was like maybe a half hour. So really not long at all. I actually stitched this out this weekend, the whole thing. And so I thought it turned awesome. out. I love it. I, I just really, I'm very pleased with it. Like I said, it's like, wow, I finally got it done, too. But they they came out with, in case, so there they have the thread kit that you have. This is the thread kit for the gold one, the one that I did. And it has, I'll go ahead and open this up so you can see, because these, these are the threads that I used, kind of a tangled mess in there. But those are the threads that they used. And uh, there's three different metallics. There's a silver, a bright gold, and then a lighter gold. And uh, they didn't use a lot of them, but they, it worked out really well. So we have those thread kits. And then we also have the thread kit in the more traditional colors of the red and green. And there's also metallics in those, but they're boxed in a box, so I can't show those to you. But uh, so we do have the thread kits for both of the colorways. And so just they actually stitch them out on a black background. I just chose that royal purple because I've been wanting to do something with the purple for some time. So you'll have to come in and see it. I think it turned out really cool. I was very pleased that I got it done. It was like two big projects that were sitting on the floor of my sewing room and they're done. It's a miracle. Yay. 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 And then, um, uh, yeah, the, the brand new, you know, OESD comes out with different tile scenes every year. Usually in the, the Christmas ones, they're related to Santa. Well, they had many, many requests to do a snowman. So Donna Gelsinger did the snowman, happy snowman. And so there is a thread kit for him and the oops oh sorry yeah. and the cd <laughs> <laughs> so but uh, yeah. so they're laughing at me so you know but you know most everybody laughs at me <laughs> but as i said these are all done in five by seven hoops we have this beautiful blue fabric a starlight fabric that is just going to be it's actually the same blue that jackie is using for summer glory and it really has, um, it's going to be gorgeous. And so I have one bolt right now. I just ordered two and one bolt sailed out the door last week. So I'm going to get some more of it on order too. Because the blue from, that same blue from Summer Glory is going to be perfect for the snowman here. So um, for anyone that might be interested in the thread kit for this, we have been notified by the company 
that there was an error in, I believe, two of the threads that they put in here. And so they're sending us substitutions. So as soon as I get those in, then these kits will be updated with the correct threads in them. So um, I have a couple people waiting that they've already gotten them and we're just waiting for the thread to come in. So if anyone should happen to want to order one, those substitutions are coming. So, um, but I just think he turned out Real, I just love him. I, I, I don't know if you can see, he's got a gorgeous little birdhouse on there. It and, actually shows um, better off Shows of better off this? Yeah. Okay, so we'll show it. There you go. Yeah. So, but cute little birdhouse and the snow. Like I said, they've been, OESD has been asked to do a snowman, something other than Santa. <laughs> and so this is what they came up with. And I just think it's absolutely beautiful. The trees in the background with the snow on the boughs and everything. It's just beautiful. So you'll have to come in and see that one. And then, um, uh, I'm going to talk about that last. <laughs> so, that goes to that one. Whoops. Uh -oh. <laughs> Jennifer's having an attack over there. So just to let you know, we have 32, we had 32 bolts of flannel fabric come in. This is just a little sampling. I thought you might like to see just some of them. I have to tell you the the quality. It's just awesome. This is um, they will they will get on the website. They're not there yet. They are. They are. Oh, they are. They are. Oh, they are. They okay, are. They are. Yay. <laughs> but um, they just they're just beautiful. They're gorgeous, gorgeous flannels. And so we ended up we have thirty two bolts. So you need to pop in and see these because they're they're just yummy. I have I want shirts and pillows and a quilt top and. All kinds of fun stuff with these. I think they'll be great. All right. So then, like I said, I really I was uncertain about what I was going to show tonight. Uh, and so, night before last, that one of those two thirty in the morning things, I woke up and I went, "Oh, that's what I'm going to do." So, I have shown the OESD pillow blanks when they came in for the fourteen inch pillow to do embroidery on. These are not quilted, and that was a question that was asked by um, oh, a couple of our customers. Are these pre-quilted? And they are not. They're just, it's just a flat surface, kind of a linen texture to it in a, kind of a, just a real light cream color. So I decided that I got to thinking about it, and it was like, I should be able to quilt those easily in the embroidery machine so that I can give it some texture. So I'm going to, so this is the back side of the pillow and you can see there's a feather design that is built into the Solaris and that's what I used to quilt this. So, um, it, I had to do it in sections, which I'll explain that and go over it. So anyway, I quilted this one, and then I decided to go ahead and use the OESD, <laughs> the OESD um, Nordic Noel by Jim Shore. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Jim Shore Santas. I've collected a few of them over the years, and I just think that turned out really cute. There is... Um, Two different Santas, a uh, nutcracker, no soldier, nutcracker, and a snowman that are in the pattern, and I think that with a couple of different designs. So what I did is I took the larger Santa and the snowman, and I put them into the machine, and then there's snowflakes. One of the, there's a set of snowflakes that are in the design too. And so I stitched these out. I will tell you, like three hours of stitching. <laughs> I didn't think I was ever gonna get this done. But, and then um, uh, learn from my mistakes. I should have put them in this way so that the zipper would be on the bottom. But my zipper's on the top, so what, you know. 
So then I just added a ribbon to it. Thought, okay, well, we'll just make it obvious then that I made a mistake. <laughs> but um, so anyway, that's what I'm going to go over tonight is uh, how to do the quilting on this pillow if you want your pillow blank to be quilted. And I think it's actually prettier quilted. And I do know that there are some other, I'm not going to name them, but there are some blanks out there that are quilted. And I've heard quite a few um, drawbacks to them in that they've not really been squared up. And so people have had some issues with them. I will tell you that this pillow is square. Now, when I quilted it, once I did all of this stitching on here, of course that did draw this one in a little bit this way because it is so dense. But if I hadn't done a design that was this dense, it wouldn't have drawn up at all. But it's still, I did a uh, half inch seam allowance on the three sides, turned it, and I've got a 14 inch pillow form in here. And I think it's a perfect fit. I, I'm really pleased with it. I think it turned out really nice. So before we get to the class, I do want to let you know that OESD, again, I don't know if you recall, but last year, OESD did a special for September, October, and November. They had three different CDs that if you made a purchase of $79 worth of OESD product, you received the free CD that they were showcasing for that month. So we have the September CD here and it's called Warm and Cozy Greetings. And it is uh, note cards and gift tags and felt ornaments and like that's so I'm gonna turn it around. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you can get a little so that's the designs that are in there. And this CD, like I said, is free with the purchase of $79 of OESD product. So um, we've already, three of them have been out the door. So you, if you're interested, you better pop in here to get them. So on the class, I, okay, what I did is this is the pillow blank. And you'll see, this is the zipper. It's got a zipper that's already, they have put an invisible zipper in it. So I went ahead and I have, I just had batting scraps. So I put a piece of batting in to give it some texture. And then I took muslin and just made it larger because I wanted to be able to have hooping room so that I wouldn't have to be fiddling with it. And muslin is cheap, so it was, you know, no biggie. So you're probably thinking, wait a minute, when she does the embroidery, what I ended up doing once it was all done, then I just took my scissors and I cut the batting and the muslin out from the zipper area and then put my right sides together, stitched it up. Definitely do that before you put your right sides together. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you definitely want to remember to unzip that. <laughs> but, um, but so I used the, in this instance, um, I did use the 10 by 16 hoop. Uh, you could do this in a nine and a half by 14. It, it will work in that too. I just use this one because it makes it easier for me, especially on the camera too, to be able to get it uh, lined up a little bit easier. So you're not sitting here watching me fiddle too much. So you'll, so as you can see, I went ahead and here is the hoop attachment and I've got it so that the zipper is on the same side as the hoop attachment. So we're going to go ahead and pop this baby in the machine. Sure you don't have your muslin underneath. Okay, so all right. So I, as I said, I just used 
one of the built-in designs. So if you go into the embroidery and into tab on, this is on the Solaris. I'm not sure where it will be on the others, but in tab number two, and then tab three, where the lemons are here, down at the bottom, in one of the more recent updates that they did, they included two continuous or edge-to-edge -edge quilting designs in the machine. So one of them, I'll just pop this up. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's got a sewing machine, a spool of thread, pin cushion, scissors, and a needle with thread. I opted, I'm not using that one because I'm gonna put probably a Halloween design in this quilt. So, or in this pillow. So I'm gonna use the same one that I used on the pillow and it's a feather design. So I brought that in. Now, um, can you put me on four, please? So um, one of the things that you sometimes you have to do a little bit of math. And so the pillow is the area is 14 by 14. So you want to bear in mind that you're going to have a seam allowance and then you also are going to have to do this in two hoopings. So I found out on doing this this weekend that I wanted to do my design 13 and a quarter inches tall and then I did it six and a quarter inches wide. So you're going to set that design into the machine and you're going to edit it and we want to size it and so I'm going to um, shorten it to 13 and a quarter and which is actually 13.29 and then I'll make it narrower to six So 6.30. So now, and then just say, okay. So now <laughs> you want to do as I say, and not what I did the first time. I did not put this in the memory of the machine. I resized it. And then in one section, when you're going to be doing the pattern connect, it tells you to bring the design up. Well, I had not saved my, my size. So I kind of had to go a different route but I learned my lesson for the other half of the pillow. So I have my size set up now and I'm just gonna put it into the memory of the machine. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to hit it to embroider, but you wanna go up in here to layout and this little thing right here that looks almost like a film strip, that's the pattern connect key, which is going to make these little snowmen that you got in your kit and you're going, I don't know what to do with those. Tonight you're going to find out what to do with those. So you're going to hit that little movie film and then we are ready to, oh, no, wait a minute. I have to, a couple things I want to check first because I need to make sure that it's set onto the pillow correctly. So I'm going to use this right here to just trace my design out in case I have to move it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the upper left-hand corner because remember, there's a zipper in this pillow top and we don't wanna hit the zipper. So I'm way too close to that. So can you get it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then I'm gonna hit okay, go back over to move, and I'm going to move it over to about eyeballing about a half an inch away from my seam or the zipper. And then I'm also too far down from the top. I know now they're trying to figure out what camera I'm on. So um, we're gonna move this up, say that's okay. So at this point, I think that corner's good. So I'm gonna go back to the tracing and I'm gonna come down to the lower left-hand corner. And I think that's too low. And it also, I'm a little too concerned. I'm, I think it's, I'm gonna have to rotate it some too. So I will rotate. So this is where you do have to, you just have to fiddle with this a little bit. You 
until you can kind of get it where you feel it's safe. With that zipper. Okay, I think we're good. So now comes the boring part. You get to watch me do this, and it's a whole four minutes. So you do want to watch the edges because you want to make sure that the foot doesn't catch on that. So you can't walk away from this. I know, I'm like, <laughs> now I don't know what to do, but I don't care. Uh, what else can I show? What can I show? What else new and exciting has come in? I don't know, I can't think of anything I've done exciting lately. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm just I'm just kind of keeping that zipper tab over to the side. It should be fine, but just, just better to be safe than sorry. Sorry guys, I know this is boring. At least when I'm at home, I can go over to the other machine and sew.
Okay. Okay. So it says embroidery is finished. Okay to connect to the next pattern. So you're going to say, okay. So do not remove the material from the frame. Press, press OK to select the next pattern. OK. So remember, I put it in the pocket of the machine. So I will bring that up and hit Set. And then I'm going to hit our little film strip down here. And now it's asking me, where do I want to put it? Select the position where the next pattern will be connected. Well, obviously, I don't want it down here. So I'm just going to use these arrows, these directions up here to rotate it. I want to put it on the right-hand side. This is the one I stitched. It's the lighter background. This is the one that's going to stitch. So you're going to tap that. See how it moves it part way, part way, and then it's going to go up and up. So now it's going to tell it, okay, I want it to the right-hand side of what I stitched before. So you say, okay, the carriage of the embroidery unit will move, keep your hands away. Okay, the snowman. Affix the first embroidery positioning marker on the material securely so that the mark is inside of the red frame. The carriage of embroidery unit will move after pressing the scan key. I will tell you, because of putting the batting in here, that it was a little difficult to get an exact fit on this. I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you look at the bed of the machine, there's a red snowman, snowman that is illuminated onto the fabric. So you're going to take this little snowman sticker and you're going to put it right you're going to line it up and sometimes it takes a couple of lifts and positioning to get it on there then we'll do a view of yeah it. okay so we can see because okay so that's about the best because of my batting it's really difficult because it wants to, to jiggle. Um, I am going to try and move that again, though. I was happy with it, but I'm not. Come on, let go. see with the batting it does make it a little difficult to get that lined up. <gasps> My snowman's gonna lose all of his stick. Well I'm gonna call it good enough. <laughs> okay, can you see it? Sorry for making you sick here. There we go. There we go. So see the little snowman is on there. So once you get that where you want it, then you're just going to hit scan. Now the machine is going to ride. It's going to scan the little snowman to get the position set. So it's going to kind of bounce back and forth here a little bit. It's reading where the snowman is. Okay, so now it's going up to the other end, and it's telling me to affix the second one. I'm going to say that's good. So you get the second one, and you hit scan, and now it's going to read that one. Okay. 
Okay. It says, do not remove the embroidery positioning markers. Please rehoop the material so that the next pattern and the centers of the two marks are in the embroidery area. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put it on this table. Okay. So, so you're then just going to take this and slide it the project over and I'm just kind of eyeballing here keeping it because if you don't get it hooped it'll tell you you have to rehoop so if it's not where it can read the little snowmen, you will have to take it out of the machine and rehoop. So if you're not perfectly centered in your hoop, it's okay because the machine is going to adjust. Okay, so now. Back in the machine. Okay, and then you hit scan. Now it's going to go and find the snowman. See, it's on a seek and destroy mission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very much so. Okay, it says, the embroidery positioning marks are recognized. Remove the marks and embroider the pattern. So I don't know if you can get that. I mean, it is spot on right there. I mean, sure is. it matches perfectly where the ending, where the ending point was. So um, I'm just going to let it rip. Let it rip. So, um, is he? So, any questions at all from anybody or anything? Are we cool? Just ties, okay. <laughs> what? Oh, high back, okay. All right. All right, I'll just stop that. I can finish it later. So, um, I guess if there's no questions, I'm on this one. Okay, I'm on this. Nope, I'm on that one. I'm over. I'm over here. Here, maybe. Here, here we go. <laughs> okay, it's like where's Vicky? Where's Waldo? No, where's Vicky? So um, anyway, uh, hope those of you that have that ability to for the pattern connect, it really is a cool feature. It's it's fun to play with. I've now used it a couple times, as I said, with the wreath. 
that I had done because uh, the Solaris has that design in it. There's a lot of designs that they've put into the machine. You can actually use this. You could use it for borders if you have the, you know, the length of something or if you just wanted to continue with. You could take any of the designs that are in there and you can use a pattern connect and tell, tell it where you want it to be. It wouldn't even have to be the same pattern. So say if I had a, um, a snowman, for instance, that I had stitched, at, but I put the pattern connect, uh, I tell it the pattern connect feature, but then I can, I could go around because you saw the different positions because it took it. So there was the main design and then it, it was, it took that one and it was going to bring in the next one. So I could either connect like put a snowflake around and then I could connect again and come around and I could just kind of go around so there's just some fun things that you could do with it to play so it's just playing with your machine and not being afraid to make a mistake um, you know you learn from that mistake that's what you want so I hope somebody got something out of it today sure. and Sharon said, wow, so cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, anyway, I hope you had fun. And if there's anything in the future, as I keep saying, if there's something that you would like to see or you would like me to try and walk through or to show you to do, let me know. You know, just drop us a line and let me know what you would like to see because I would love to, to help you out with it. So um, anyway, everybody, take care. Have a great weekend, and I'll either see you here in the shop or in a couple of weeks. So thanks, everybody. Good night.